Hey guys, welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur, and today we have an amazing guest for you. We're going to be talking about creating a profitable digital course in 2021. You don't want to miss this episode, so stay tuned. Coming to you from San Antonio, Texas, welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur, a podcast created to help entrepreneurs build their business, branding, marketing, analytics, positioning, and lead generation, plus interviews with other business owners to learn from their successes and failures. Now, here is your host, Abel Garza. Hey guys, welcome back to Creative Entrepreneurship, and we have an exciting guest for you today. We're going to be talking about creating a profitable digital course in 2021. My next guest is an expert in the music industry. He's he's now delving into marketing. He has been successful in launching a consultant company and, and helping other entrepreneurs build their business through coursework and entrepreneurs who want to launch digital courses. Please help me welcome Glenn Allen. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Man, it's really exciting to have you on the show today because this is right in line as to what we want to do here. So this is a great opportunity to pick your brain and understand how we can approach this as a beginner, as a nascent entrepreneur who wants to bring in some technology, some courses, and some knowledge into the, into the market. So why don't we start out by giving me a little bit of information as to who you are, what you do, and how you help your customers. I am a, well, first and foremost, I'm a single dad of three kids and a multi-instrumental musician turned marketing and launch strategist. Basically, I started out as a professional musician, you know, went to Berkeley College of Music, did that whole thing and, you know, got on the music scene in New York, California, but I needed to pay the bills to support my family. So I started teaching and I developed a system of teaching, you know, I play a love and instruments. So I was teaching a lot of different people and I found a lot of patterns in people's fears and doubts and limiting beliefs popping up. So I developed a sort of a system of teaching that got people results really fast and it became overbooked really quickly. And I thought, I need to scale this. So I started a YouTube channel back in, I think it was like 2007, 2008, mm-hmm. and started teaching tutorials. And I put out my first, you know, I, I made an offer to a freebie to get people in an email list where I sold an ebook and my first mini course and it failed. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I made 70 bucks. So (laughs) I took that knowledge and I started applying into freelancing because a lot of friends and acquaintances were asking me, how did you do this? How did you set up your funnels? How did you you create the email automation? So that spurned this whole obsession with marketing. That's sweet. I mean, there's a lot of information to obtain from you, but I think... I think the primary things that I would like to know is the first steps as to how I can approach this, what, uh, what we can do to grow our audience and how we can monetize this course. So what is the first step that I need to take to start my course? It's a little bit of a chicken egg thing because right now a lot of people are, are thinking, you know, either they can't meet with people in person or their events aren't happening. And so they're wanting to take their expertise and scale it through a course. And that's really smart. But the, there's, a, there's a trick of, okay, well, you need to have an audience, but you need to have a product. It's, that's the chicken and egg scenario. Oh, yeah. um, but most importantly, I think you really have to figure out, you know, really what is your secret sauce in the way in which you've been able to be successful? And then how can you quickly gain experience repeatedly teaching people to go through that same thing? Because while you might be an expert in something, because of the way you intuitively think about things, uh, other people think differently and will struggle with different things and will have different ways of going about something. So it's really important, first and foremost, get some experience teaching other people the same thing that you've done. Mm -hmm. You're gonna learn a ton about the common ways in which people maybe doubt themselves, struggle with something that you wouldn't expect they'd struggle with, or want to know something that you hadn't thought of teaching in a, in a certain way. And mm-hmm. you're going to get really quick, really good at repeating that till it becomes almost systematic. So I always tell people start consulting, start coaching or start teaching a class, whether it's, you know, free or paid, mm-hmm. paid is best. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about that because uh, a lot of times you want to develop a course, but you don't actually know what the problem is or what people are really, really wanting to understand. And so when you're teaching these courses and you're doing a freebie for for like a group of people, like I'm going to give you the example of learning off camera flash for photography and you're teaching people in a group what they need to learn 
as far as your technique is concerned, they're going to have questions. And th- some of those questions you can answer on the, you know, while you're there. And learning about how people learn is a great way to, uh, to understand how you can, um, I guess, mold your course, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. In fact, one of the most important things you'll learn, you hinted on the freebie thing. A lot of people create these freebies because they think, well, this is something that, you know, might be interesting to people rather than thinking, you know, is this aligned with the ultimate result that they want? You know, I always tell people, look at those questions people keep asking you, Mm -hmm. those burning pains. What are people searching for in, you know, Google searches that are related to your service or your ultimate, you know, info product, like a course? What kind of questions are they asking and how are they asking those questions? Figure out what words they're using and use that in your messaging. And then you can align your freebie in a way in which not only is it, it it qualifies people by like solving that little question. Like we, you know, you kind of close the loop on their little burning pain Mm -hmm. and then, and you do it a certain way in which you open the loop on a new problem they have, like a good to have problem. An example of this is, um, I took, uh, I I took a, a little, I got a freebie. It was like a little video training from a guy named Stu McLaren. He's known for a course called Tribe. It teaches people how to create membership sites. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to make one. And so I've, I listened to his, his freebie video. It was like three days of really small training. And he basically gave all the people viewing it a script to get people to validate your idea. He said, just send them this little email script. Say, um, hey, I'm looking to start this membership. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. And you can get in on it at the lowest price possible. It's the founding members pricing. So we call this the founding member script. And a bunch of people bought. And so I had paying customers and a validated idea. And I thought, oh, crap. Uh, that solved my problem, my mm-hmm. little problem. How, you know, how do I get customers? How do I validate this idea? But it opened this great to have problem of now I need to learn how to actually create a membership. Mm-hmm and retain people and so because he you know because he closed the loop on a small problem and opened the loop on a good to have problem i had to take the paid step with him to learn the next step and so if you can do this when you're listening to what kind of things people are asking you about you know start thinking in that direction Mm -hmm. yeah i think that falls a lot in you know growing your audience and you you touched on something that i think you know a lot of folks uh I guess like when you're when you're writing a book, for example, like you you know you're going to write a book, but then you put it out there and say, hey, uh, uh, sign up for the free book or sign up for my book, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, you had a hundred people sign up, now you're really obligated to write this book, <laughs> you know, or you say that it's going to be out in a couple months or a few months, and then now it kind of gives you that that push uh, uh, to write your book, which is I th- I think is a good o- option also, uh, but you talk about growing your audience and uh, and and doing this membership of the script. And uh, I, I think that's an interesting approach because you can, you can put it out there and then you see what kind of feedback you get initially without having to, uh, I guess, put forth all this work before you, you know, so like, let's just say you put up all this work and then you put your, your information out there and nobody buys it, but then you can do this preliminary uh, script and get at least some feedback as to whether or not this is going to be a viable option. Absolutely. Feedback is essential. That's why I said, you know, it's important that you, you teach, but also you could, you could, you know, offer other people that are in your, you know, your niche or who are fledgling or, you know, novices, you can offer, you know, Hey, if you get on the, a zoom call with me for 10 minutes, I'll, I'll give you some advice on, you know, whatever, you want to know about it, you can ask me anything. I do this all the time to kind of validate ideas and listen to what people are struggling with and what they want to know. Uh, it's a simple way to getting marketing feedback, assuming you know what they want. Because yeah. I've had uh, uh, one of my friends and past clients, uh, she's a videographer. She, she uh, um, created a course based on what her done for you clients wanted and she thought oh this is going to be great but a done for you client who just wants to pay me to do all the work of videography and editing is very different than somebody who wants to learn how to do video to market their business and so she released this course nobody wanted it 
great information, mm-hmm. but not valuable to her clients. And so she had to scrap it and f- basically ask people, well, you know, what are you struggling with? What do you want to know? Mm-hmm. What's hard? What do you no longer want to do? And she knocked it out of the park. It's one of the best courses I've ever seen on, on creating video for marketing. That's awesome. I mean, we will, we'll definitely have that in the show notes then if, if, if you can uh, provide that for sure. And then, uh, you know, we can, uh, sign up. <laughs> um, what would oh, you yeah, say? Absolutely. I mean, continue on with a little bit more as to how you can grow your audience. One of the things that, uh, I feel once you've cut your content, you know, you've decided you've done your market research, you found out that this is the problem you figured out, you know, that this is going to be your approach. You've sent out this information. What are some other techniques that you've learned to grow your audience? I have a few different ways in which, you know, clients do this and I do this, Mm -hmm. but one of my favorites is the dialing in your lead magnet. And I hinted at this before, but you know, there's all these different types of freebies you can put out there. There's PDF checklists, there's cheat sheets, there's quizzes. Mm -hmm. But what I've realized if, if you're going to sell something where people are seeing you as the personality, either on video or you're doing consulting work or something like that, or you're a performer, give people a taste of what that's like on video. And so rather than giving people like a, a one-off cheat sheet or, you know, a little PDF guide or something or an ebook, which sounds like work to people, you know, mm-hmm. they'll download that thing. Maybe they'll skim through it and then go on with their life. They have no idea who they are, who you are, sorry. Mm-hmm. And they have no incentive to open any future emails in which you might be nurturing them and building, uh, you know, an email relationship and then eventually wanting to sell them something like a course or service. However, if you can pick one small win, deliver it via, short, 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 short videos mm-hmm. over the course of say three days, people are engaging with you repeatedly and they're seeing your personality and expertise. It's a perfect translation into, you know, them seeing what you're like and getting to know you. And I've found this to be very true when I've gone out and looked for, you know, freebies on different things I want to learn. Mm-hmm. For instance, I was trying to learn how to grow my audience on Instagram. I knew that the secret was hashtags, but I didn't understand how to find my hashtags. I downloaded a couple of freebies from different thought leaders. And, you know, after reading through them, I really couldn't distinguish one person from another in my inbox. And I eventually unsubscribed before they could ever offer me anything. Mm -hmm. I think one of them, I stayed subscribed and she offered something completely unrelated. Oh, wow. But this one woman dropped a video lesson. I watched it. I got my, le- my, got my one win. I saw how brilliant she was. And then she closed the loop on that small problem. I had a bigger problem. Mm. Now that I know how to find all the hashtags I want to use, where the heck do I use them and how? Mm-hmm. So I had to buy her next level, which was her Instagram course to learn how to you know, build a business on Instagram. And so it worked on me. And I realized, oh my gosh, I can teach people this exact system, teach them how to pick that topic, how to outline it. And so I actually created my own freebie, my own meta freebie. It's very meta where Mm -hmm. I'm saying, this is how you do a lead magnet. Watch me in my lead magnet as I explain all the strategy behind what I'm doing. So I call that the golden lead magnet. And once you have that, you can offer that everywhere. You know, your email signature. I put it in my bios on, you know, my very very social media. Uh, Mm -hmm. When I'm on a podcast, like I am right now, I put it because it works um other people's audiences it's one of the the greatest ways you can grow your audience i you know reach out to podcasters reach out to facebook groups mm-hmm. um you know speak in other um, masterminds things like that do you do you have certain criteria that you would say qualifies it as a lead magnet um so a lead magnet is essentially something that is free that somebody else really, really wants to know. So yeah, that criteria for picking your lead magnet, it has to be like a bleeding pain that you know your audience wants to know. It should, but doesn't need to, but it's really helpful if it does, um, pre-qualifies them to work with you. Because the way I, I designed my golden lead magnet, I realized people were coming to me to ask me to help them launch a course, 
but I knew that I couldn't make them successful if they didn't have an audience and a list to sell it to. So mm -hmm. I realized if I created something that taught them how to grow their list, it would pre-qualify them to work with me. So try to find something that, that fills in some of the pre-sales cycle for you, the things that maybe you don't want to do. Yeah. Maybe the, the part of your services or your, your consulting or whatever it is you do that you just don't want to deal with automate that part through some kind of free offering. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these that pop up on my Facebook page, it's that, you know, they start talking about how, you know, you have a problem with this, this lighting system, are you properly exposing, uh, you know, certain uh, individuals in your photography, you know, do you want to improve your, your in revenue in, in videography, all that stuff kind of answers the question up front and then it delves into a little bit of a preview. And then once you click on that, like request information, that's where you start collecting their emails, correct? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So you collect yeah, that. Usually there's some kind of an opt-in page or something. Yeah. So when you're collecting their emails, now you have what? You have a little bit more uh, flexibility as to how to introduce something else. What is this, the next step? You know, you've thrown out the, the, the feeler. You've collected the information. Now you're, you're do you like, um, do you still do a freebie and, and introduce something that's uh, uh, a little bit more in-depth before you go into like the full-fledged course? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to kind of skin that cat. And there's, there's just, there's so many methods out there. Mm -hmm. But the, the basic premise is, you know, you've got something for free. You've gotten them into your email address. So you want to deliver that thing via email. And, you know, as in the case of the golden lead magnet, my, my, my thing is give them something on day one, but give them something also that they, you know, break it into a few days. So they have to keep coming back and, and really reinforcing that engagement with mm -hmm. you. So they build no like, and trust with you over a short period of time. And then, you know, add in little, um, case studies or emails over the course of a few days. This is all automated. You, you know, you pre-write these. Okay. They don't have to be perfect, but you automate it through some kind of email service, like a MailChimp or a convert kit, or in my case, I use Kajabi and, um, showcase different ways in which maybe some of the people that you've worked with have, have had success because that builds social proof. Mm -hmm. And then over time, as you're, as you're, as people are getting results with it, they're using it and you're showing, you know, the case studies or maybe some testimonials, you can slowly say, you know, move them over to, okay. And if you want to take this to the next level, this is what I have, or here's how you can work with me. And that's, you know, pre-written sequence of maybe five emails over the course of one to two weeks mm -hmm. from there just add value to them, teach them something once a week, you know, something like that. And over time, if you want to add another offer, you should go value, 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 offer, value, 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 offer. You really want to always be providing value to your email subscribers. Mm. That's, I'm gonna, that's an interesting approach. Value, 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 of course, that's, that's awesome, man. I love that. And they may not always be a course. Could be a workshop. Could be group coaching. Could be, you know, a performance or an event. That's awesome, man. I mean, I think we got the audience building down. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting to find out, you know, your approach to this. Now, once I've got all that and I need to monetize it... I know that there's details. I know there's ways in which you need to learn, you know, the, the like the scripting and or as far as your, you know, how you're going to put together your emails and all that stuff. So there's additional work that that uh, the listeners have to uh, engage with and, and look at. Uh, but the basic approaches, the basic fundamentals uh, of how to build this course is definitely the direction that we're going. I, I totally feel this. Um and understanding how to monetize it, I think, is a is a is a great way for for to um, I guess close this entire process. You know, you're looking at building it, you're creating your content, delivering it, and now you need to make money from it. How do you do that? Well, the most important thing is having an audience that's ready to buy. And some for some people, they don't always have that audience right away. It takes time, but there are always audiences out there 
that somebody else has that are your ideal audience. And so learning how to find and partner with those people, I love affiliate launches. Uh, it's actually something that I created a course on with one of my good friends who um, he's done really well at this. He did a half a million dollar launch doing this and mm -hmm. um, he's helped people get to six figure businesses doing this. But basically, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a story. So my client, Michelle, was on the road with Elvis Costello. Um, she's a live sound engineer. And Elvis Costello is like my all time favorite songwriter. If you don't know him, look him up. Um, she used to do sound for the likes of like Janet Jackson, um, mm -hmm. Indigo Girls, Garth Brooks, Styx, Mr. Big, a bunch of other names, Gwen Stefani. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit, she found herself without work. And so my friend, Michael, who's a course creator who teaches how to, um, get your music placed on film and TV. That's his course. And that's how he's, he's been successful as a musician. Um, we basically partnered him and her together. He basically said, um, you know, Michelle, you need to create a course. You need to do what I'm doing. So she did, but she put it out there to a list she had built through another organization she has about sound engineering and nobody really bought it. Um, sound engineers were out of work and so they weren't the right fit for this course. But Michael's audience was perfect because they were making money licensing their songs for TV and film. And so Michael just introduced her in and said, hey, this is my friend, Michelle. She's, you know, she's done this in her career. Her knowledge about you know, EQing and, and making music sound professional and polished has helped her be successful. And it's actually helped me become successful. This is one of the things that's important to me being able to get so many placements on TV is because my music sounds professional. So when you take what I teach and what she teaches together, it, you get outsized return uh, or um, results. Mm -hmm. And so he just did this little like introductory thing. A week later, he did, he's like, you know what? Everybody really enjoyed this video. They've been asking me a lot of questions. We're gonna do a live Q and A and a little training from her. She's gonna teach you something from her program. And you know, some people showed up, maybe 200 people showed up. And from that, with the, just a $200 program, um, it was like $13,000 in sales. They didn't do like a hard webinar or sale thing or anything. They just said, oh, by the way, mm -hmm. for the next week, her course is available to you. It's not open to the public. If you want to get it, here's the link. Mm -hmm. And uh, so leveraging somebody who already has an engaged following gotcha. and your program fills the gap with theirs is one of the best ways that is you can great, really monetize your course. Man, that's a good, that's a great idea. So I'm going, coming on Glenn Allen's show and then I talk about my course and then it's promulgated throughout the entire uh, Wisconsin, United States, uh, everywhere, because you're so popular. <laughs> and then we just throw that out there. And then all of a sudden we're just, uh, we're getting all these, uh, these, uh, courses sold. That's awesome. I love that idea. Uh, now this is, it's not a unique idea, but it's still a great idea. You know, it's coming to, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it lets people at least get their, their wheels turning and understand that there's other ways to make money. You know, there's so many different ways to, uh, engage with with people and that is a perfect way uh, to do that I mean I guess the challenge would be to find somebody who's willing to you know embrace you or you know bring you in uh, and that's usually the biggest challenge but you know if you're like with um, you know with podcasting it's a great example you know you you want to pro you get your your podcast out or you want to get your your name out uh, even if you're a, a model or something, you know, you, you want to go with uh, somebody who's influenced or is an influencer. Uh, and then uh, uh, even with photography, if you post a, a photo and you want somebody to share it, an influencer could get you, you know, like 5,000 likes or whatever. So it's, it's the same concept. I love that. It's great. Um, what, what is, uh, how, how can, uh, how can, um, we start to approach that part of it. Like, would you use LinkedIn? Would you use like uh, Instagram? What, what would be like your, I, I it's probably dependent on, on your, on your market, but how would you approach it uh, just from a, a general perspective? I love that question because I mean, in some ways, if you're looking to do this from a core standpoint, it's a little bit easier because you can offer an affiliate link where they're getting up to 50% commission back on the sale. So it's not like they're just selling for you. They're, they're, mm. There's a benefit to them. The other thing is, if you know how to approach somebody in a way that you say, 
this is how it's going to help your audience. You know, we want to add value to our audience. So don't mm -hmm. just come at it from a money, money standpoint, you know, talk about the value to their audience. But to go back to your question, um, this is actually something I teach my clients and something I, I've started to systematize and I'm actually considered making this into a course soon. Um, I basically, I don't believe in templated messages, right? Um, I, I don't think you should just like, blanket go on social media and reach out to people cold with something template get to know people you know like with uh with us like i was looking at podcasts that are um in my niche or dealt with things like creativity and you know artistry and music because that's a lot of who i serve and your podcast was the first one that came up and i started looking through the episodes and looking at the topics and what kind of things you talk about and i just i just reached out in a friendly manner using linkedin that's one thing i love to do um, if somebody's, you know, on Instagram, I'll send them a voice message. I just like to show up like a regular person, mm -hmm. not as some like, Hey bro, you know, uh, <laughs> you do really cool things. I get a lot of those messages and I, I don't, I, I just delete them, you know? Wow, yeah. So because just be sincere, generic. you know, be, be sincere, sincere and yeah. tell people if, you know, if you like something about what they're doing, tell them specifically what you liked. Don't just say, Oh, I see your profile. You're doing impressive things. What does that mean? That means mm. nothing. Yeah. Impressive that's a, things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love the idea of offering an affiliate link. I know you said affiliate earlier, and I didn't quite grasp the understanding of the affiliate part, but I think I understand it now when you say that you are looking for somebody who has an audience already and then offering them a link to be an affiliate. I did. Is that what you meant? I mean, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. There are uh, systems out there that will allow you to create a link for your product. And then when they use that, that link specific to them, mm -hmm. um, anybody who clicks that link, it drops a cookie in their browser. And when they make the purchase, the credit goes to the person who um, gets that affiliate link. And you can have multiple affiliate links. I can make one for you. I can make one for my friend, Steve. I can make one for my friend, Amanda. And, you know, each person has a unique link. And whoever, whichever link gets clicked on and gets a sale, that person gets credited. Do you have one? Do you have one that you're using right now? To, to, to... Uh, so currently, I am not uh, doing any affiliate for my own product yet, but I will be doing that very, very shortly. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so we, that you can I just, work. you can just Google something like that, you know, Google, uh, you know, affiliate link creation or something like that, I guess, and then, uh, figure out how you can incorporate that into you. That's amazing. I just, uh, I'm you're blowing my mind right now, which is cool. Cause I'd love, I love the ideas that you're bringing forth. It's, it's just built a, into like programs like Kajabi. Mm -hmm. Oh, so oh, the one that you're using already for your email list. Yeah. So when you're a course creator, it's, it's more helpful to have like a, a marketing platform that helps you actually drop in the course, market the course and process payments for the course and email people that are, you know, getting into your system. So like Kajabi is an all in one platform where it can be a website. Mm -hmm. You can do your landing pages on it. You can do your emailing, all your marketing automations, deliver the course, sell the course, process payments, affiliate links, the whole nine. Yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. How do you spell that? C O N? Uh, Kajabi, K A J A B I. K -A -J -A -B -I. I actually, I could give you a link for that. Um, yeah. that is, is an affiliate link I have. Oh, awesome. Where you can get an extended <laughs> trial. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. So we'll put that in the show notes for sure. And so, uh, you know, it's funny is that you mentioned this in, and I had put together a, a Facebook page and I had just, you know, haphazardly just did it because I just wanted to see what kind of, um, response I got. I put, you know, uh, off camera flash with uh, off camera flash mentorship with uh, Abel Garza. You know, and then all of a sudden, people started re requesting to subscribe, and I was like, "Man, that's that's crazy!" You know, because I just put it up. It's it's something that like people want to know. So understanding how to get all this information together, putting it together, doing your research, understanding how you can, you know, put your lead magnet out there, collect your emails, you know, generate additional content that will corroborate your initial, uh, uh, your initial course or your initial uh, video, and then uh, just continually provide that value into your course. Uh, it's amazing. And then understanding that you can actually make money by uh, providing affiliate 
links to other folks that might be able to help you with their audience and because you're tap, you know you're you're actually you're tapping into somebody's audience that you didn't have to work so hard to get you know of course you know it's great to have your own audience but if you're just starting out that's a great opportunity for you to you know at least get your feet wet you know it's great absolutely one of my first clients chris bradley taught music production to women who are struggling with the fact that producers in the studio would treat them like girls who don't know what they're talking about. So she made this non-techie music production course called uh, From Voice Memo to Demo. Mm -hmm. And we did this and she had a $300,000 a year last year. When we first started, she only had 35 people on her email list. So, I mean, it works. That's amazing, man. I'm like really excited. Like <laughs> I don't usually get too excited about stuff like this because I already know a lot of it, but I don't, I didn't really know a lot about this topic. So it's great to be able to pick your brain and understand which direction we can go. Uh, you know, particularly here, even with creative entrepreneurship, it's a great opportunity for us to, uh, you know, do something. I mean, I don't know exactly what we would do with that just yet, but you know, you could always pick people's brain and put a script out there and understand what the pain in the market is. So uh, understanding the, the, at least this fundamentals is a great opportunity for people to start developing their course in 2021. So uh, how can our listeners get a hold of you? Um, you know, one of the best ways is check out, uh, you can email me Glenn at the Glenn Allen show, or just go to the Glenn Allen show.com. I'll give you the link for that for your show notes, but Absolutely. Um, that's the best place to check me out. Otherwise, I do have a YouTube channel too, which oh. is The Glenn Allen Show. Awesome, man. The Glenn Allen Show. So I usually like to ask, you know, if you have any words of wisdom or some rules that you live by. Always have fun. You got into this because it's a passion of yours and it's something that you enjoy doing. And it's it, you'll notice those times when it becomes work. I had one of those days today. I have a bunch of proposals to, to put out and things like that. And I realized... I want to be in control of my day. I need to have fun. I got to show up to this podcast with good energy. So instead of doing all the work right away, I play guitar for an hour. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. I mean, it takes your mind off of stuff. And of course, you know, when you play guitar, it just puts you in a different mindset. I love it. I love it. Great advice. So there you go, guys. Glenn Allen, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. You're an inspiration to me and our listeners. And I'm so glad to have had you on the show today. Thanks. It's been a pleasure being on your show. Awesome. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. Glenn Allen. Be sure and check out all the information. It's going to be in the show notes. We're going to put everything in there. Be sure and check out creativeentrepreneurship.net. We are transitioning from the creativeentrepreneur.net to creativeentrepreneurship.net. You can always check us out at tcepodcast.net, tcepodcast.net for all our social media. Be sure and check that out as well. And until next week, keep on keeping on. Thank you for listening to The Creative Entrepreneur. Please click the show notes for additional information. Want to know more? Click on the subscribe button and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by visiting us at tcepodcast.net.